Hey everybody, what's up? I just want to do a little tutorial for you all. I'm trying to post one once a day. And um, yeah, I want to do a, because uh, I'm very obsessed with pinup styles and I like the 50s. I'm very uh, into period makeup. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to do a little tutorial for you guys on how to do kind of like very pinup rockabilly makeup. And I want to keep it very, um, very true to the era because you got to think back in the 50s, makeup was not the big phenomenon it was. And it didn't really blow up into the big phenomenon of where it was very avant-garde, more brighter colors and um, things like that. And, you know, more play until like about the 60s. And then kind of toned down in the 70s, came back in the 80s. And uh, yeah, so, but you got to think it was 1950s. So we're going to be using a lot of matte colors. Um, I'm just going to do like winged eye, winged eyes. Um, also, eyelashes, the type of eyelashes you should be using, the shape, things like that, and why. Um, so, yes, and I am using the 1970s. Oh, that's all I have. Anyways, yeah, exactly why we're going to be using them, how I'm going to apply them, things like that, the different types of lipsticks, um, little tricks you can do for that, um, how to make your lipsticks last longer, kind of contouring, but not really contouring, things like that. And so, um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just prime my skin with uh, NYX Photo Loving Primer, which I really like this primer. I'm actually was a little picky on what primer I was going to start using, and I'm not hating this one. And I just kind of do a little four-dot system on my face, and then rub it in all over. I'm putting the most where I need it. My lines and wrinkles. Oh boy. I know what's up with good, Right. So, got that on and then we let it sit and we let that dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes. I'm going to go ahead and use eye cream and I'm going to do a big shout out to my favorite eye cream in the whole wide, whole wide world. Fast response eye cream from MAC. I cannot get enough of this stuff on my skin. It is freaking on my eyes because of course the skin under here does not produce any oil. So you do want to go through there and... Um, kind of replenish that so, I'm just trying to get so now that we're getting that done I'm gonna go ahead and for an eye primer I'm gonna usually I use a white primer only because I like to show true heavy impact of color but uh, since it's the 1950s and I want to keep it very simple I don't need that much impact on color when it comes to that so I'm gonna go ahead and use my Mac paints um, soft orchard and I did put a little wax over my brows because I do want to thin them out a little bit um, because it is a 50s tutorial so it's going to look a little bit heavier in here. But then I'll go through and show you how to do the brows. Because back in the 50s, the brows were a little thinner. So go through, and the reason I do my eyes first is because I do uh, anything that should fall from my eyes will actually be covered. Okay. So I'm going through, and the reason why I'm using a wet prime, a wet base. going through and really really shading it in here so you guys can kind of see that but it's just giving a good cover and actually you can bring it down here I'm not gonna do that just because like I said any shadow that should fall anything like that and I do want to show you cool little ways to line the eyes and especially make it very 50s ish um, going very pinupy very you know Ava Gardner Betty Page if you ever look at their makeup it was very simple it was very soft the big accent on their face was just the um, was their <clears throat> You know, was there lipstick? There we go, there's the word I'm looking for, lipstick. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go ahead and take a powder. I'm gonna use a, uh, all matte colors, all matte, pretty much. And I am taking this one right here, it's a soft peach, and I'm just gonna set my uh, primer with that. And I'm going all the way across and just setting my entire eye. And remember, that's why I kind of like doing the foundation last, because you can be a little bit more messy and not have to worry about, you know, anything falling or things like that. So once again, taking that same powder, doing this on the other side, and just setting it. And I'm not doing very heavy impact, but just enough. 
Now I want to take my lightest color. I do have a white. Let me grab a medium impact brush, which is this one here. I'm going to take my flat white. And remember, it's the 50s. There was no glitter. There was no any of that, you know, fun stuff that we like to use today. And on the inner rim of my eye, I want to highlight. And go right onto the lid. Once again, take my white inner corner all the way up into the crease and onto the lid. But I want a little bit heavier right on the inner crease of the eye. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a brown. It's actually what I call my pinup brown. It's a um it's a matte color. It's just a very like suede brown. It's very simple. And now it's, I have a issue of almost like recessed eye, uh, recessed crease where it goes very far back into my eye. And notice that if I place any dark colors in here, it's just gonna make my eyes look a lot more sunk in. So what I want to go ahead and do is actually place the color just above that crease and onto my brow bone, right up in here. So I'm going to kind of triangle it down into this area here and then onto the actual brow bone and then I'm going to actually blend it in. So a little loose hair. So with a angled brush, with my eye open on the area you can actually see and then into my crease. And then I'm gonna connect it down here. And I'm literally just drawing it on. A little bit more impact there. And drawing, and then I'm going to just take my blending brush and blend, 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 blend into the actual lid itself. So that's gonna create more of a like multi-dimensional effect here. And like I said, it's not, you know, crazy heavy makeup. It's the 1950s. They didn't, you know, lipsticks were still uh, well fat, whale fat based. And, you know, the big heavy, what would be the Mac of our time would probably be Max Factor. That's what they used on Olive Lucy. So now I'm going to take that brown that I did and now I'm going to blend it down. Blend, 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 blending. And now with it blended, it's very soft. And now see how it gets more of a uniform look. It looks a lot flatter. doesn't look so heavy. So one more time. And then blend, 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 blend. Oh, I usually have a lot more views, more people watching this when I'm doing this. So now I'm going to go back through it and I just want to clean up any little areas in here. But as you can see, it's just soft, it's simple, nothing too crazy. If you kind of want to modernize it a little bit, you can do this inner part with um, maybe a metallic shadow, but I just I want to keep it very authentic. So now that we're at this point, now I'm going to do the brows. I'll show you exactly how to do brows. And I'm going to um, I'm going to do my brows with powder because I obviously think uh, powder looks more natural, especially when it comes to eyebrows. And mine are so full already to begin with. So if I can just find my eyebrow palette, which is probably right in front of my face and I'm just not seeing it. Ah, here it is. Okay, so now with a big angled brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brown. This is a palette by Ardell. I actually really like it, um, down at Sally's. I'm going to draw one line below the brow and then fill in the crease. So, and then I'm going to do the same thing on top is draw a line and then connect it right at the angle. 
So we're going to get really, really strong, heavy impact on the brow. And it's really weird because I had very unmistakable kind of thing you guys had. And I fill it in. So, a fill in and a very rounded eye is what we really want. So, we're going to draw one line underneath. And fill it in. And one more time on top. And then fill it in. And we have brows, and obviously you can do them a little bit thinner. Honestly, if it was a, uh, I would have actually black, uh, glue sticked them out and redrew them. <clears throat> okay. So now we're at this point. Now I'm actually going to take some mascara. So now we've mascarad, and I have very tiny lashes, so you really can't see much. But now I'm going to actually line my eyes, and I'm going to go ahead and take um, engraved by Mac. Actually, no, that's not it. That's heirloom. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab white pencil. I'm going to show you a really cool trick with that one. Now you got to remember that was the 50s. There's not a lot of going on under the eyes. You actually want to highlight underneath because of that. So I'm taking my liquid liner. Here we go. Too many pencils. All right. So by Mac, I'm using ebony, and then I'm going to actually line underneath my waterline. And yeah, that tickles like crazy, but you can see I'm already getting a nice little winged effect. Um, you can see how much fuller it makes my lashes look. It's not overly dramatic. There's not heavy lines on top. So I'm going to do it one more time. Lift. I've some, seen some people go all the way with that line. I personally don't. I don't think you need to. Um, you know, you really just want fullness. If you can make it all the way across without it, like, tickling way too much, then more power to you. But, yeah, it's literally just gives a lot more fullness to the lashes and a lot more naturalism, especially because I'm going to put on fake lashes with that one. So, now, um, you can clearly see it's a very soft, easy eye. Hey, Amanda, how are you? So, it's a very soft, easy eye. And now, on the bottom, in the waterline, I'm going to take white. And... Now this is also a good little trick too with the white. See, it's just giving a nice little highlight, and once we put mascara there, it's not going to look so white. Hey, Kathy, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, one more time on the other side. And now it's just giving me more of an open, a bigger eye. You actually can see my eyes look better. They actually look kind of little to me, a little blue on camera. So I'm doing good, Amanda. Thank you for tuning in and checking out this little tutorial. So, um, now I'm at this point. Now I've already mascara. I've lined the bottom eyes, lined top, and like I said, I haven't done my foundation yet because I do like the fact that, um, anything that falls, we just pull it off. Or wipe it off. Because eyes are always messy. Toe So now, eyelashes. So, now, this is something actually I get asked a lot, is how do you get the eyelashes off the case? And this is the easiest way to do it. Lightly push them down. And you can use both your thumbs for this. And be very careful. I have one little... Ooh, that one was hard. All right, so now we got that part off. Now, you want to wrap it around your finger. Why do you want to wrap it around your finger? Because you want it to get that round shape of your eye to help it hold better. Oh, thank you, Maddie. I'm a hairdresser, obviously. I'm in a salon. And, uh, yeah, so just kind of passing on my 20 years of experience of makeup and... So, wrapping it around my finger here, and just creating um, better shape. Now, once you've got that, and see how now it's a little bit more rounded, it's got more of a little smile. 
now oh, I'm going to okay. size it. These are a little too long. Can you grab me the scissors at the front desk, please? So these are a little too long. That's what. So it works. Well, I always kind of do it all. I do the primer first and let that dry while I do my eyes. And then, so now these eyelashes are a little too long for me. So I'm just going to cut off two little pieces. And now here's actually how to do. And the reason I'm actually picked, um, if you notice these flare, they start shorter and go out bigger because I am trying to create that winged look, that, you know, winged look. And we are trying to create, um, you know, white eyeliner on the bottom is also really good when you're hung over and that redness up in there or a nude one, it works really good. Um, give that more of a highlight right there, but yes. So that winged look and it's just obviously they have a little bit of flare out. Now I'm taking, I don't use duo glue. I am um, using bonding glue. You can get this at Sally's and a very little goes a long way. You can get it in black or in white, depending what you're more comfortable with. I like the black. And I'm putting a little bit on the case. And now I'm just dipping. Dip, 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 dip. You don't need a lot. And if you're having somebody put eyelashes on you and they start blowing on them, they're blowing all that spit onto those lashes that are about to glue to your eyes. So, little, you know, little uh, PSA there. And now, you basically, this is where I have a really hard time doing these on myself. And then I always like to do them like that little downturned effect. There we go. And now we got one on. And I kind of like to have that little downturned effect just because I want to create more of that, you know, sleepy eye, which is very common for pinup. But if you really look at those pinup pictures, what is mainly exaggerated? Eyelashes and lips. So that's why the eyes are very simple, very natural, very matte. You know, the eyebrows are very thinner. So once again, we're going to pull this off of here. It's easier if you just use both your thumbs and just kind of shimmy them. Okay. So, and then again, wrap them around your finger to give it, it's like if you look at the shape right now, it's pretty flat. You can't really, your eye isn't that shape. So, wrap it around your finger. Get it to round about. Yes, my nails are always brown. I'm a hair colorist. I don't like to wear gloves. What lash brands are your favorite to use? Um, whatever's cheap and actual natural hair. Um... <laughs> So, I'm going to post this. I'm also going to post this video on uh, YouTube, Carla, so no worries. What brand of white eyeliner? Yours are a lot more bold than mine. To be honest, this is Wet n' Wild. 99 cent stuff. Yeah, it's Wet n' Wild. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just wrapping it around here. Um, you know, don't be afraid of the cheap stuff. Sometimes just good primers. See, when I actually telling people when I'm actually selling makeup, things that are actually touching directly onto your skin, spend money on your foundation, your skin care, your eye creams, things like that. Eyeshadows, lipsticks, and all that go cheap because it's not touching your direct skin. Eye primers, spend a little money on. You know, things like that. Um, skin brighteners, your face wash, you know, things like that. You really actually want to just spend a little bit more on. So now I can show this to you and see how now we have a little bit more of a smile line as opposed to it was so straight before. Rounding them out actually really helps a lot. And I wonder if this glue completely dried while I was sitting here talking to y'all. Nope. So glue on the case. And I already put mascara on. I do the mascara first. And so, like I said, if somebody's doing your makeup, tell them to do this with their hands, not. Because if you're doing them on yourself, blowing them all you want. It's your own spit. Hey, Penny, how are you? So, all right, so now we got the lash. And like I said, I have a hard time doing these on myself. And I know some people use tweezers. I just find it easier with my fingers. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I am not the makeup police. 
Oh, thank you, Penny. So, all right, got the other one on. Now, here is the trick for winged eyeliner. Um, I've learned the string trick. I actually posted that on my page. Um, you know, and I also did see a little, a little chore where if you paint the lashes underneath, like I did the eyeliner, um, they look a lot more natural. I've never tried that before. I'm not about to do that on camera for the first time because I'm gonna look crazy. Anyhow, so now I'm gonna go through and take an angled brush and I'm gonna go ahead and use a gel liner. Um, sometimes I do use a pencil liner. Your hair's fine. It's an hour. So what? One an hour I have to take off. Okay, and so now I'm taking this and I'm gonna line the eye. Because my husband's office is And with eyeliner, it actually blends in the lash line a lot better. I'm not sure. Just try Google. Uh, actually, if you Google my name, Bren Batico, all my pages will come up, and then my YouTube channel should pop up. But, yeah, that's really weird. Um, it should just be my name, or if you just search my name. Under YouTube, I'll get the exact address and post it on my um, Facebook. <coughs> so there we go. Why Okay, so I got that part done. I haven't even done the wings yet. So now I'm actually going to, and I did take a gel liner to do that one. So uh, now I'm taking my uh, eyeliner pen. And then just drawing it in. Now when I get to here. And there you go. Did a wing. And remember, if this is liquid liner, if you're not perfect at it, take a brush and then just blend it. And see this little, like, how I kind of got that little bit right there? As soon as I do my foundation, I can get rid of that and actually wing this out a little bit more. I do travel if uh, people pay for me to go there, <laughs> Amy. But no, I have traveled before uh, for weddings, things like that. Um, I did one bride out in Disney World. That was a really cool one. Um, she had a very princess-style wedding. It was beautiful. It was probably the cool horse-drawn carriage, very Cinderella, very everything. So now, let's line the other side, and here's always the hard part, matching both eyes. Okay. All right. So we got that part done. I am going to bring this line a little bit further down over here because it looks weird to me. Yeah, anybody who's watching me, the only time I really ever get quiet during these things is when I'm trying to line my eyes and putting on my eyelashes. Um, that's always like the hardest part for me, and I'm sure everyone out there too. Now, to keep this from kind of running, sometimes I do like to set it with powder, and plus it just mattifies it a little bit more, so especially when you're going for that. Ooh, different brush here. 8,000 brushes, and I gotta keep using the same one. There we 
go. So now I'm going to take my white pencil again, and now I'm going to line just the inside rim and highlight that way with my white pencil. Okay, so now we're at this point right here. And now I'm going to go through and let's go ahead and start the uh, foundation and everything else. Um, now, if you do line the bottom, I would not go very far. Just a little bit on each side. All right, so now let's go ahead and highlight. I'm going to go ahead and take some. Where's my highlighter? Oh, it's right in front of my face. So, <clears throat> now, taking too much of my Rimmel Glow. Okay, so we're blending that in now. Let's go ahead and, since I grabbed too much, place it right there. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to grab my foundation. And any kind of foundation. You don't need any heavy, heavy um, coverage. Because again, we're going to go through and contour. But we're not going to do like heavy contouring. Remember, it's the 1950s. Contouring was not... That's big of a thing that we have it today. And yes, I am spreading my foundation on with my fingers. And now, contour! <coughs> Alright, is this it? No. Now remember, we're not using anything shimmery, nothing crazy on the skin, like we're just very little, you know, highlighting is fine. Um, but yes, for period makeup, like I said, we are doing period makeup and I want to go through and we're going to contour, contour, contour. So just a little bit on the cheeks. And now I'm going up here on each side, kind of doing an L. And now from temple to eyebrow, one again, temple to eyebrow, dot, 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 and then below the jawline. <coughs> now for the nose. Go about halfway and then back at the bridge. A little here, a little bit right there, and a little right there. Now, if you, depending on how you're shaping your nose, a little bit like across can actually give a little bit more definition there. Every time I use this brush, I remember I got this. So now again, I'm going to go ahead and take my lightest color under my eyes. Under my eyes again. Down the forehead, down the center of my nose. Up here, we do our three lines. Down here, of course, and here with the highlight. Pretty much in between everywhere we didn't put the dark lines, we're putting the lighter lines. And right in here. Alright, I'm taking our blending brush or our sponge, whatever. I'm using Smashbox Water Primer to help spread me. Cream concealers. And then I am patting to blend. I'm just patting. Because I don't want to lose too much of the, the contouring. Like, again, I'm not going to go through and powder contour. So, just pat, 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 and it's blending that way. Okay. 
Okay. Pat, 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 pat. All right. So, does anybody have any questions? Everybody's doing good so far? All right. So now if you want to go through and actually add a little bit more of the highlight right in here with that, you know, I did it underneath the foundation because like I said, we don't want anything too radiant to it's the 50s. You know, it's not supposed to be anything like, oh my God, is my lash coming out? Yes, it is. There you go. Now, if you ever have this issue and I don't have one in front of me, take a toothpick, a little bit of your eyelash glue, and place it right on that corner and then just press it down. I don't have a toothpick with me, so I actually probably can't do that for you guys. Um... I do have a very thin liner brush that I hardly ever use. So take, in, you can, like I said, you can do this with a toothpick. Try to get that glue onto that rim that's sticking up. There we go. I got it happening on the other side too. Oh, yeah. So I hope that really helped a lot. Um, so, so far, that's what we got. All right, so now that we're at this point, you can go ahead and set your foundation with powder. I usually don't sometimes, but this time I'm actually going to um, find my setting powder. I'm going to go ahead and use a translucent powder, which is probably somewhere right in front of my face, too. I own way too much makeup. Always right in front of my face. Always, always right in front of my face. So now I'm gonna take a HD setting powder and sponge. I'm actually gonna real heavy under the eyes. Try not to inhale it. No, I'm actually at my job right now. I'm at a salon, Indulgence Hair and Body Salon, uh, here in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, so I'm completely setting that. And this is a translucent powder that I set this with, because, of course, we want more of a matte finish. We don't want anything high and glossy and shiny, because that just didn't exist back then. But seeing we got a nice, good matte finish, we still have contour, strong definition on the cheeks. So now I also want to take and uh, my cheeks here. Now I broke my cheek palette. I'm really sad, but I'm going to take the soft, brightest pink I got. Brightest pink, because remember, lips colors back then were not. And I always used to like to go like that little half of an E and blend. Remember, makeup tips, remember, you're doing makeup like your grandma used to. You know, really pink cheeks, really red lips, a very heavy eyeliner. I try to post one once a day, Sierra. Um, but I do always uh, take my videos, I download them, the ones that I'm posting on here, and I post them on YouTube. So if you search my name, Bren Batico, um, you should be able to find the videos on there. I need to make that a little bit easier and get like a, because uh, I just started posting them back on YouTube. So, But it does this way everybody can go back and see the little lessons I teach them. Um, now, tricks for the lips. Now, this is where I'm going to teach you a little bit different. Um, you need to find the shade of red of lips that work for you. Different reds have different bases, and I've explained this several times. This red right here is more of an orange base, which you can tell when I hold it up to this one. And this one's more, and this is more of a satin finish, as opposed to this one, which is more of a blue red base. Uh, yeah, it's more like, and it's more of a matte finish. But it's just depending, and depending on your skin type, the skin color you have, it just, whatever matches your skin tone better. Most people with an orange, uh, orange underpigments under their, that make up their skin color, um, make up their skin color, usually 
the orangey colors, corals, do not look good on them. It makes them look like an Oompa Loompa. So you want to find something with more of a blue-red base to it. So there is a red out there that matches your skin color. It just has to be the right shade of red. So, um, is that powder or cream? You just did your cheek. It was a powder. It was my, actually my cheek palette, powder blush. And I did the pinkest pink I had. And just a little powder, yeah. And then just accented over where I contoured. But like I said, we are keeping everything as matte as possible because it's the 50s. We didn't have, you know day glow makeup and things like that so um now i'm gonna say if you haven't seen my little trick on how i adhere everything for my lips i'm going to do that for you today i'm actually going to use a pressed powder that's the only it's just a pressed powder it's the same foundation same powder you use to set your makeup with nothing too crazy um and this actually will make your lipsticks last all day all day so you are going to take your pressed powder with a, with a sponge uh, whatever powder out your lips completely powder them out and why because same thing like when you do a primer on your eyes and then you place a dry shadow on top of it, you create that, you cause it to stick. And it holds better. So again, we're doing the opposite. We're using starting with a, wet ba with a dry base and putting a wet base on top of that. So we are going to completely powder that out. And then I like to, um, I'm going to use a clear lip gloss. Or lip, I can find one. I'm, okay, I'm going to use whatever I can find in front of me. I am trying to find my lip balm. Oh, I did makeup this morning on someone, so I don't know where that damn thing is right now. Not there. There it is. Alright, so now I powdered out my lips, and now I'm going to take a lip balm any type of lip balm doesn't have to be anything that crazy um burt's beeswax anything but chapstick doesn't have to be tinted they do make tinted ones burt beeswax does and they're actually really really good um and they work really good for this step because as you know as we go on it kind of leaves a little veil of color behind and it's nice so you just want to hydrate the lips really really well Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and line my lips. I'm going to use a brighter red. Let's see, and I'm going to use a uh, MAC red. And now if you notice the way of filling them in, I'm not filling my lip in completely. I'm leaving this little veil of color. Now at this point, you can actually take a pink. You can take a, uh, just put a red over it and a simple red, no gloss, because we are keeping this matte. They did not have heavy glosses or anything like that back in the 50s. And you know, back then makeup was whale fat. So was, yeah. So let me, I'm actually gonna do a pink because I really wanna show you all. Grab my lip palette up here. Let's see. Foundation palette, eyeshadows, eye palette again. Lips would be the one at the very bottom. Every lip color you can think of. All right, so now I'm going to take a pink because I'm going to show you how to give like really, really full, full lips. And this is actually very pinnipy. I'm going to take the brightest pink there is on my palette here. And if you can find a mattifying lip gloss, it's actually even better. And see how it automatically gives me that pouty lip, that fullness there. A little bit more of a fullness, so that's a little trick you can do. I'm actually going to go through and actually do red lipstick because I just, it's traditional. So there we go. Red, 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 red. Now that we're at this point, you're going to take a, a tissue, toilet paper, anything like that, a piece of toilet paper. That's what I have right here because you're on a tissue. Now if it's two ply, separate the plies, 
take your little sponge again, and that same powder it can be translucent, can be loose, can be pressed, can be anything. And again, get a good little amount on your sponge or your brush, however you want to do it, your finger. powder over those lips and lock it in and look how it creates like a nice little matte shade but it's kind of getting that sheen off and then once again red and then reapply and you can apply it in the way I just showed you with the pink or just like this I am a makeup artist for a living. Thank you, Kayla. Uh, I do appreciate that. So there we go. And we got this bright, bright color here. And now to clean up the lines, you can actually go through with the sponge or a little angled brush. Take your powder again. And so remember, you set your foundation with this. So it's the same powder. And then just kind of line around the lips. Now you can go through with like a bronzer and contour a little bit to give even more fullness. Was by taking a darker powder and lining around the ellipse very gently like do one line here one line here line here and line here and then blend it'll give you a good fullness oh it is the red i'm actually using is russian red by mac i actually really like this red especially for pinup looks and it is more of a blue red and then i use the red lip liner from then but yes by doing this it's going to create a little barrier to keep your lipstick from bleeding And then it's just going to clean up any little smudges you have, so it's going to just lock everything right in place. But you can see this look isn't too, it's more heavier on the eyeliner. We line the inside with the white, so it's giving me more of a highlighted look, and it's giving just a softer dimension once we put that mascara down there. Um, but you remember back then, mascara was actually, uh, I didn't think it was in wand form yet. I don't think it was more of a little brush like this. It might have been in wand form. I'm forgetting who did that. Um... So, yes, very simple. You would actually just spray yourself so this foundation, but literally it's two colors on the eyes. Two colors, but the way blending does it, and you can see it in the beginning of the video. I uh, go back as soon as I post it. But this would be a traditional 1950s pinup style look. So, you guys can see that, and it's very simple, very soft, very elegant, very not heavy, shiny, no glitters, no none of that, but just soft and easy. And like I said, you saw how I put the, uh, my eyelashes on and the glue that I used was the bonding glue and removing them. It's just as easy as duo glue. And then actually and when you get it to this point, and I, what I like too is this glue is a little bit thicker. So when it dries, you can actually just kind of peel it off. And I did post a little thing on my, um, my Facebook page on how to uh, clean your eyelashes because technically you should be able to get six uses out of your eyelashes. So... Alright y'all, so I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to hit me up, send me a message, uh, anything like that. Um, you can follow me on YouTube, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to post this video on there. I'm going to download it and post it there. Um, it's my name, Bren Batico. You can just Google my name. Same thing, just like my page, uh, Bren Batico at Indulgences Hair and Body Salon. Um, I'm also a hairdresser. I do a little bit of everything, so feel free to ask me any questions you want. I've been doing hair for 15 years, makeup for 20 years. Um... Yes, uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, I'll be posting more videos on this group. I really enjoy the comments I get from you guys. I really enjoy the love. Um, you know, it's a very uh, welcoming place. So thank you guys. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I will check you guys tomorrow.